Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Commitments. Tonight, we have Kellen Dam on with us. You can find him at Kellen Dam on Twitter. He's going to be talking about integrating GitHub with Slack and Hubot. Uh, hopefully, we've got that pronunciation right. If not, I'm sure somebody on the internet will figure out we're wrong and, and let us know. Uh, a few show notes before we get started. If you've got questions, feel free to drop them into the Go to webinar question window, and I will keep an eye on that. Also, keep an eye on the Commit Miss and V Brown bag accounts and hashtags on Twitter. Past episodes you can find at bit.ly slash Commit Miss 2 with a capital C because I like to make that annoying for myself. And as always, you can check out our GitHub repo where we'll also post the uh, past recordings and any challenges associated with the episodes that you might happen to be watching. And with that, I am going to make you presenter, Kellen. All right. <clears throat> so that should be you now. Looks like a screen to me. Okay. So you probably see the GoToWebinar screen right there now? I do. Okay. I'm going to close this. All right. Well, uh, like Jonathan said, tonight I'm going to show you guys how to integrate GitHub with Slack. And then I'm also going to quickly show you guys how to deploy Hubot, which is an application that GitHub's uh, created, and a few little tips and tricks. So hopefully we can get this going fast. Everything works good. It's going to all be pretty much a live demo, so hopefully it all works out. But if you guys have any questions, feel free to stop me, and I'll kind of stop like throughout and ask them. So, all right. So as you can see right here, um, I I already have logged into the Slack app directory. And for those that don't know, last week they actually announced that they um, did an $80, $80 million million um, round where they're actually deployed a whole bunch of applications. They're going to um, be doing a whole bunch of that where you can do more bots and things like that. So this is a totally different screen if you haven't logged in for a while. It actually changed and messed me up, so I had to relearn it real quickly. So. The first thing that we're going to do is, um, you can normally find this if you're in your channels here. Uh, let me, of course, it's not working right. But normally in the channels here, if you can, uh, let's go here. If you go here, apps and custom integration, you can get there. No, but it works fine. So we're going to go do a search for GitHub. And we have installations. This is currently my um, Slack room or organization. So normally, since I've already configured it because it's good for me to assign my GitHub, normally you would see a area for you to add your, your um, GitHub account information. But as you can see, it's already configured. I don't have to do it again. So this may be looking a little different to you. The, the first thing that's going to come up, of course, is post a channel. Um, what I did for this, specifically this is I created a GitHub channel. You, of course, can choose whichever one you want. You can put a general and you can change it as needed. So we're just going to put in GitHub, add a GitHub um, integration. The other thing, too, is uh, we're going to authenticate our GitHub account. There's two different ways that you can use authentication for GitHub um, support. And that is uh, full-blown mode, which Slack has read-write access to your um, GitHub repository, or you can do on-off mode. And you can switch between those as needed. Um, me, personally, I'm just going to stick with the normal mode. It's my personal account. I have nothing to hide. But if you want to switch to that, you can switch to this. And it's just a few different options. And you actually have to go into your GitHub account and set up like a webhook and make a few different changes. Honestly, I never set it up because I really wasn't interested, but it's something for you to try if like, you're trying to set up GitHub with Slack with your company. So when you get here, you can definitely choose a repository. Just for this, I created Slack, but you can um, choose as many repositories as you like whenever you want to see any of these, like a commit issue, deploy, things like that. Just pretty much do all those. Um, already chose that. We can customize the name that it's going to post as. I'm going to stick with that. You can change your image, but I'd say stick with Octocat. It's 
we're going to save integration, all set up, we're pretty much done there. So now the next thing that we can do is I already got logged in. I already have a text file in my Slack repository. I'm already going to do a change just to make things go faster. All I'm going to simply do is do a right quit, and then I'm going to run my shell script that I built for committing. Uh, test number three, and it's going to commit. And then what I should see, I should see a new post right here, test number three. Um, it's pretty generic and things like that, but there there have been talks that they're going to do more things, and a lot of a lot of that integration you can do with Kubot. Uh, they have a lot of, um, and I'll get more into it later. They have a lot of what they call copy scripts, which is what Kubot um, scripted in or programmed with. Um, that you can actually do those kinds of things. But for t lack of time, I'm I'm not going to really show you that. I just wanted to kind of show you guys how to get Kubot integrated. So pretty straightforward. Like I said, that's the easy part. You know, the the next integration thing is the the Hubot part with um, the GitOps had. And uh, since uh, last week when they de deployed it, they gave a, a few different HIPOTs or a few different bots. Excuse me. You know, there's Hubot. Uh, I know there's Lita. There's one called Ur, and then um, Slack has theirs called Slackbot, which I, in my opinion, I call it um, Microsoft's version of Clippy. The only caveat to that is you make it annoying. So, and I won't really go into that. The the thing about Slackbot is like if you type something, like you know, on on Twitter, a lot of people. They say they don't like premise. So if someone types premise in there, you could have it say say some smart remark or something like that. So, but what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you guys how to configure Kubot if you wanted to use it for chat ops. And some people are like, well, is chat ops really for me? Um, chat ops when uh, you're when you're looking to deploy it you want to make sure that your automation library is built out for your company. And then what you want to do chat ops for is extend your control plane to your developers and potentially your end users if you so choose. In my opinion, right now, as far as chat ops goes, it's lacking in two-way communication out of the box. Um, you might expect to be like in a chat like matter, like talking human to human. Um, but once you can integrate your bot to with chat off like that, it'll be a very powerful tool. The only downside is you got to you got to do a lot of your own programming, depending on your infrastructure, your applications, and things like that. So, um, as a background, well, I guess is there any questions we got for people before I start deploying it? All quiet so far. Okay. So right now. Um, Hubot is written in CoffeeScript and Node.js, and you can pretty much deploy it on any Linux machine. I have it personally deployed in CentOS 7. I'm running it up in my uh, in Ravello in the cloud there, so it's very easy to get access to, so I can get to it anywhere. Um, the main things that you want to do right away first is you want to go to your GitHub integration. And actually, we'll go here because it's already configured. So as you can see, I already have two configured. This is the main one that I'm using right now. Stanley was another thing that I was testing with an application called Stackstorm. But Hubot is the one that I built in here. And the main things that you're doing is when you're configuring it is you want to get this API token. This is primary, the primary um, um, connection between your Kubot server and Slack. So you can configure a lot of it, you know, change your name, things like that. And I'll get more into that later and show how it's actually integrated. There's different ways you can do it, and I'll show how I did it to make it easy for you. So the first requirement to, to get Kubot working is you got to do install Node.js. I've already had it installed, so it's pretty, you just do a yum install Node.js. 
And then you're also going to want to install Node Package Manager. Node Package Manager is how you're going to deploy a lot of the applications. You're also going to want to have Git because Git, um, of course, is GitHub, so there's tightly integrated with that. So let me go to CD Opt. And let me make sure, yeah, let me make sure that happened. Oops, I'm going to do a space. Okay, and we still have that, so nothing broke since I had last mess with it. And we still have NPM. The other thing that you need to install are like Ruby Server, um, lib SSL dash dev, uh, lib xfat one dash dev. There's quite a few different things. And also, after you install npm, you also have to install CopyScript, which is what Kubot runs on. So what I'm going to do right now, since I'm in this this op folder, is it needs to run. I'm just going to quickly deploy a, a Kubot for you. You already have a Git. So we're going to clone that. It's going to download for us. We're going to CD it to Hubot because it should have created that. Then we're going to run an NPM install. And what that's going to do is essentially deploy Hubot into that folder all the default um, requirements for it. There's still a few things that you have to add, but what I'll do is um, go into my folder that I know works because this definitely didn't take me the time I'm showing you. It took me a good four to six hours because, you know, learning NPM and things like that. But we'll try to make it as quick as possible. Okay, as you can see, it's already done. So the other thing that you'll have to do, and I don't want to do this again because I'll mess up my current application is, um, you have to do an npm install yo. And what yo is, is it's a uh, framework to create tools. And they've actually um, installed a generator for Hubot. And what that's going to do is create your own custom Hubot so it'll interact and do things with you. So we'll do an in npm install yo. It's already installed. Like I said, I don't want to mess mine up. And then the other one we're going to do too is, and this is important to do the generator, is generator dash kubot and that will install. And then once this is all configured, you can do a yo kubot and if it and if it works, it's going to come and like I said, ask you for all this information. And what that's actually going to create for you, I'll go to my folder that already works. Dash control. It's going to create um, this package.json file. And I'll show you quickly what that has. This, this isn't going to be, it's going to be pretty generic, but as you can see, I've added a few applications for testing and things like that. But the nice thing about this is this is your master application deployment file. And uh, sorry here. And what that references is this node underscore modules folder that contains all your um, applications that you can integrate with your Hubot. The other thing too is a lot of times when you're doing, when you install an application or a copy script or anything like that, a lot of them will require you to um, add to via external mesh scripts. And really all that is is just there. You can do a lot of that. Just going to make sure you put your commas in right and all that or it'll mess it up. So as you can see, I've already installed a couple of my applications just for um, going faster. So what I'm doing right now is I was going to show you a quick install. Normally, um, when you do an install, you're going to do an NPM install. Who about how it's going to, it's going to run? It's going to download it real quick. should go pretty fast. It's already done. So the other the other command you always want to remember too is sometimes when you come into this folder you want to do an npm update. And the nice thing about the npm update is sometimes like if you're running an application and you notice like your copy script is like corrupt or something like that, what you can do is you can either completely remove this node modules folder 
or you can just delete that application and then run this and it should download because it exists in the package JSON. So, I already ran the NPM update earlier, but that all pretty much works. So what you can do here is the, um, the Whobot application actually runs a bin Whobot. So from within here, I can just run it in here. Should run. Okay, so so I actually named mine Larry. I don't know why, but that's just what came to me at the time. So that that is actually set when you do the Yo Whobot setup. So I'm going to do a Larry ping just to make sure it works. I should get a pop. That comes back. So I can do a Larry help because I installed that earlier. The Whobot help save should work. And those are, are all the um, commands available to me from here. Now, when when you want to run Hubot to start start up successfully, um, there's quite a few different ways you can do it. What I did is I actually created a shell script that, don't ask me why I put it in this D. That's just always so I remember it. But as you can see, what I did is you got all my keys and everything now. I'm going to have to change them after this. But um, right now I'm exporting my Slack token. So when it starts up, oh, excuse me, I'm actually doing a pull for Hubot. My stuff's in Hubot Control, which is a totally different application. I, didn't, I ended up not liking, but I didn't want to destroy it. But going back to it, all your Xbox files and is uh, what's calling, so like Slack token, and that's integrating with Slack, um, you know, GitHub, things like that, for testing and things like that, and I'm just making sure my Hubot adapter Slack, things like that. You know, um, I know Jonathan, he's big into Ansible. I've been working a little bit into that. It works pretty slick when you get it working properly, so it's pretty cool stuff. And then finally, this actually starts it. So I always make sure that's running, and um, usually how I can tell that is when I come into here, I have Hubot always in here and in here into my general session. So what I do here is I usually log into here when my machine comes up because it's in Revella. It takes a little bit. I always wait for it, and when there's a green dot in here, I always know it's time. Let's get working with Hubot. So you got to go do your add Hubot. Oh, Command. So those are, like I said in here, matches all my commands. So you can do, we'll do something here. Um, I would have done image me, but I upgraded this morning and I changed their IP, API, so it's so different. So hubby ship it. But there you go. So really, um, that's all I got. I mean, I probably made the installation of Hubot seem pretty easy, fast, but I mean, it's it's not as intuitive as other applications, but I mean, when you get it working, it's really powerful and you can use it a lot with Git, GitHub and things like that. I know there's copy scripts that you can um, do your pull requests, do your commits and things like that, so. Awesome, Kellen, thank you questions? very much. Yeah. We are quiet all the places okay I think well, everyone's got to go get hubot installed so they can start figuring out how to get the uh, integrations working yeah well uh i when i uh, messaged you on twitter i had never deployed it so th this was all me learning in the last month so awesome my job here is done then yeah and then and now i learned all the things you learned well, mostly. <laughs> so, yeah, if, like I said, if you guys got any questions or anything like that, let me know. So. Sounds great. Thank you very much. Thanks for the folks that were watching. And uh, check out all our recordings at bit.ly slash commitments, too. Have a good night, everyone. Okay.